Well, hello there and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen and fellow pipe smokers. This is Hunter, the country gentleman coming at you. And I hope all you guys are having a fantastic Thursday so far. I just got off of a live Google Meet with Joshua, the Peace Pipe, Brody Joe, Nature Photography Guy, and Sylview, Vintage Pipe Nightmares. We all had a really, really good time. A couple of us were smoking pipes and we're all chatting BS and giving each other a hard time as we always do. But definitely looking forward to the next meeting with you guys and with you as well on Tuesdays, John. I always enjoy your Google Meets and of course your lives on Tuesdays and Saturdays. So definitely guys, definitely be sure to check all those guys out and send them some love your way. But anyway, I'm over here this weekend watching over my sister and brother-in-law's house, taking care of the dogs and whatnot. They had a, a family emergency on our brother-in-law's side with his grandma. So uh, hopefully everything's okay with her. But uh, they asked me and my twin brother to watch the house and take care of the dogs. So I thought I would do a video for you guys because I'm a little bored if you will so but today's video is going to be on how do I keep my tobacco moist or how do I re-moisten my tobacco after it's dried out which if you guys know um, or don't know um, I keep pretty much all of my tobaccos in my shop because that's primarily where I smoke and it is an uninsulated metal building and this is Texas, so it gets really, really hot in the summer and it very quickly dries out your tobacco. So I want to show you guys a couple tricks and tips that I've learned and learned from other guys or just things I've picked up myself. So without a further ado, guys, I'll get the camera set up and I'll show you all how to rehydrate your tobacco. Alrighty, guys, so here are my tins, jars, and tobacco samples that have dried out on me. But I have some apple slices here. And I have a glass of water. Now you want to make sure you use purely filtrated water. You do not want to use well water or city water. Well water, you don't want all of the mineral all those type of mineral taste in your pipe tobacco and then city water is just filled with all kinds of nasty crap and chlorine and whatnot so be sure to use something like bottled water or water out of those big jugs or whatever and you can use spirits as well I just don't have any spirits on me right now but um, it's very very easy to rehydrate your tobacco now if you do let your tobacco dry out you're not it's not going to be as good as it was fresh out of the tin you always lose a pretty decent percentage of your flavors when you rehydrate your tobacco but if you're like me you don't like to waste tobacco especially when they're blends that have been sent to me i especially don't want to throw away any tobacco that people have given me i will always try to smoke all of it because they took the time to send me that tobacco and pay for that tobacco to be shipped but anyway guys without a further ado i think we shall start with the sample blends and on these we will be using apple slices now because these are just samples i don't want to use a full apple slice but we will use a half apple slice And I know a lot of guys say that um, when you use apples, you don't inherit any apple flavor or anything into the, into the tobacco. But I have found with me anyway, I do get just a very small hint of apple flavor in the tobacco, but it does dissipate pretty quick. It's more in the smell. You will definitely smell the apple in the tobacco when you remove the apple 
which I don't mind. I like apples. But anyway, just a, a half, half an apple and something as small as, like, say, a pipe sample. And you only want to leave the apple in your tobacco sample for maybe... Don't get in the shot, man. But uh, you only want to leave the apple in your tobacco for at least a day or maybe two, depending on how dry the tobacco blend is. You definitely don't want to forget about it and then you come back a month later and you got a moldy apple in your bag. But it only takes about a day to maybe a day and a half or two for that apple to completely rehydrate your tobacco. And of course, uh, be sure not to eat the apple after you take it out of the bag. You might get one hell of a nicotine punch. <laughs> but anyway, it's that simple. You just apple in the bag. Leave it for one day, check on it, and then if it's not to your moisture liking, if you want it a little more moist, then give it maybe a half a day or one other day, but you don't want to go any higher than that. So there's all the samples. They got their apple slices in it. And you can also sprinkle in just a little bit of water using maybe a... Um, oh, what are they? The little, uh, oh, what are they called? Little dill you squeeze and it sucks up the water. A, it's basically like an eyedropper or something like that. A turkey baser? No, not a turkey. Turkey baser would be too big. But like a little eyedropper or something, you can take a little bit of water or spirits, whatever you're using, and just put in two or three drops of water. You don't want to put too much water in your tobacco, but that works pretty well too. I've done that a couple of times. But this blend particularly has dried out significantly, which is my old iron sides, which it's already a tobacco that's on the drier side when you receive it. Which only got a couple flakes here, so I'll probably only put in a half an apple to rehydrate it and whoo man that smells just like Texas barbecue that smells good but the same as the bags you just want to leave the apple in your tin for about a day or so maybe two an apple a day keeps the dryness away <laughs> I thought it was an apple a day keeps the doctor away now this one's a pretty, close to being a pretty full tin, so I'll go ahead and put in a full apple slice into it. Where did I put my lid? Oh, it's on the tin. Like I said, personally to me, I feel that the apple does add just a hint of flavor to your tobacco. A lot of guys say it don't, but I taste apple. You put each to his own. Now this one's, it's dried out a little bit, but it's not too overly moist, so I'll probably only put in about a half an apple into this tin. Now here's a way that I personally like to keep my, my tobacco moist in my mason jars, which is a trick. I figured out which you can use the apple or you can just dab a little bit of um, water droplets or 
alcohol droplets in your tin. But this is a way that I've learned to keep my tobacco nice and hydrated in a mason jar. So what you want to do is take a paper towel and rip it into four sections if it's one of these. Well, I ripped it in half already, but if it's one of those big square sheets or if it's the half sheet, just rip off half of it. And what you want to do is fold it into a square. Take a little bit of water and just lightly dampen the paper towel. You don't want to over soak it with water, but just enough to get it nice, nice and moist. Somewhere like that, to where it's not dripping, but it's got good moisture consistency in it. And what I like to do is fold it up and tuck it under the mason jar lid. Now this process does take a little bit longer. It works a little more like a humidifying stone or something. But what I'll do I just simply tuck it up under the lid to where the um, glass part of the jar that meets with the screw insert on the lid will help keep that paper towel held in place on the jar. And this you can leave on longer if you um, forget about it for like a week or so. It's not going to overly moisten your tobacco. This is probably more of just a better way to help keep your tobacco a little bit moist but it's a way that I found that actually works very well for me anyway and another thing if you put your tobaccos in a mason jar you never want to fill it all the way to the top of your tobacco jar or of your mason jar and the reason behind that is because when you jar up your tobacco it continues to ferment, so you want to leave enough room for the gases to build up. It's not going to like blow up your jar or anything, but you want to give enough room for the gases to build up. And just so there's a good air pocket there to help filtrate the air and moisture in your tobacco. And it just helps keep your tobacco a little more fresh and the oxygen to kind of open up your tobacco but we'll do the same to this jar. And if you don't want to do this method, you can also put a apple slice in the middle of your tobacco jar. But this is a way I found out to keep my tobacco moist in a mason jar. Just a little bit. Like I said, if you want to get fancy, you can also use spirits with it if you want a certain added flavor. Remember anytime you're using a spirit or a whiskey or a bourbon that flavor will inherit a little bit into your tobacco. Like I said just fold it into the lid. Make sure it's nice and tight on there. And that's it guys nothing to it like i said check on all of your tobaccos in a day or two and they should have about the perfect moisture content i tried the apple slice thing for the first time a couple days ago and i left the apples in two of my pipe tins that were really dried out for about a day day and a half and it brought them right back up to the perfect moisture um just the perfect moisture level that I wanted in my tobacco. I said, you, when you, um, when you pop that lid off your tin, you are going to get hit with a storm of apple smell. And like I said, I personally taste a little bit of apple in the tobacco. A lot of guys say it doesn't, um, in the apple does not intrude the flavor of the tobacco, but it does just a teeny little bit, but it dissipates pretty quick once you smoke it. But anyway, guys. Well, guys, I thank y'all so very much for watching. I hope y'all learned a little bit. And if any of you guys have any other methods of keeping your tobacco moist, 
please let me know. I think it's important for us to kind of experiment a little bit and find better ways to keep our tobacco moist. But anyway, guys, I hope you'll have a fantastic weekend. This has been Hunter the Country Gentleman. God bless, and until next time, signing off. Bye-bye.